Hello and good day everyone, welcome back to the show. My name is Sean David, thanks for tuning in. In today's episode, we got a very special guest. He played Jason in No Retreat, No Surrender. Kurt McKinney, welcome to the show. Thank you, thanks for having me. Kurt, now, No Retreat, No Surrender was your first movie, and I heard so many different stories how you actually got the part. Now I want to hear it first hint. How did you actually got involved with the movie? Um, I had seen uh, an ad, actually a friend had had seen an ad in Dramalog, which was a, a publication you could get at a newsstand in L.A. at the time, and it had listings for... Uh, casting notices, often for um, independent film type stuff. Um, you often had to go through your agent for, you know, uh, more network TV or, you know, big budget uh, stuff. But anyway, that, that a friend of mine said they're looking for, um, you know, actors for this karate film. Uh, it's called Ring of Truth, the original name of, oh. of the script. And I said, oh, okay. I said, let me let me pick up the publication. I'll check it out. And I picked it up. I saw that they were, you know, casting various roles. Um, I had pretty much just moved to L.A. from Kentucky, from Louisville, Kentucky. So, you know, I, I had done a few little things, commercials and stuff like that. Um, so I thought, you know, maybe since I had this martial arts training, I've been training since I was 12 years old. Uh, and... I, I thought, you know, maybe, maybe I can do something with this. I was in L.A. to be an actor. You know, I wasn't really necessarily thinking about, um, you know, making martial arts movies. But I thought, well, that would be, sure would be fun. So anyway, long story short, I uh, send in my picture and resume. Nothing. Crickets. I don't hear anything. So I'm at work one day. I worked at a, uh, the old spaghetti factory on Sunset Boulevard, a little little uh, Italian place waiting tables. And a buddy of mine goes, you going in for the open call? for Ring of Truth? I said, well, I, I didn't hear anything about it. He goes, yeah, they're having an open call on Saturday at, you know, Sunset Gower Studios. You should go. I said, well, you know, I already sent my picture resume and they didn't, you know, they didn't call me or anything. So probably, you know, I'm not what they're looking for. He said, it's open call. Anybody can go. You might as well just do it. So I, um, I say, yeah, okay. So I'm, <laughs> I've been out with some friends the night before on Friday night. Saturday, I get up, take a, I lived in an apartment complex where we had a pool, take a swim in the pool, I'm laying out and uh, by the pool, just getting some sun. And I'm thinking, oh, that, that, that audition today, what, what, what time that is? And I go pick up the drama <laughs> log and I look at it and I go, ah, what the hell, I'll go. So I threw my dojo and my stuff in my bag and, um, and grabbed the picture and resume. And I went, I went on over to the studio and it was really toward the end of the day, I sort of almost missed it probably like four o'clock in the afternoon, I get stopped at the gate by some security guard. And I said, yeah, I'm here to audition for Ring of Truth. He goes, uh, oh, I, I think they're just about done casting that movie. They, you know, wow. I think most of the parts have been cast. I said, really? He said, he said, yeah, I think they're stopping, you know, like in like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And I said, oh, okay. He said, I think they're just looking for the lead character. I mean, this guy's just having a full on blown conversation with me about, you know, <laughs> maybe I should go home. <laughs> it, and so, and he's a security, he's a security guy. And so I said, um, uh, he said, they're just looking for the lead. I said, well, okay, I'll, I'll audition for the lead. He goes, I think the guy's supposed to be like 17 years old. You know, M meanwhile, I, I mean, if you see No Retreat, No Surrender, I look like I'm 15 years old. <laughs> I was 22, 21 or 20, 22, I think. So I, um, Anyway, he lets me in and I, I go in and there's still some people like it, you know, waiting to go in. And um, I don't know. I can't remember who it was, but somebody came out and uh, they pulled me out of the lineup. And then there's some Chinese dialogue going on between a couple of people I didn't know. And they, they brought me inside and they had me do some scenes with a couple of people. They had me um, um, show my martial arts skills and they, can you do this? Can you do that? You know, there's always a translator everything oh, there was okay. somebody translating so no one spoke english keith strandberg the writer of course spoke english and he did a lot of the translation um but um the ng uh, producer and Corey yuan they they didn't speak english and i didn't speak chinese so we we uh, had to everything had to be interpreted but anyway uh, toward the end you know i was there for over an hour you know try this scene try that scene try this move try that move uh let's see a jump spinning 
roundhouse kick. Let's, and finally, uh, toward the end there, uh, Keith Strandberg called me into the office. He said, come on in. He said, we want to, uh, we want to make you an offer, Jason. And I said, wow. What? Yes, man. <laughs> crazy man talk about cloud nine man you know if you're just this kid from louisville kentucky and they tell you you just landed the lead in a, a martial arts movie you know so and i can remember you know like just maybe i don't know 10 or 12 years prior to that i was with my karate instructor in downtown louisville at a little 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 theater scene like a bruce lee movie or something like <laughs> the big boss or one of those you know Just imagine you didn't go. What would ha what would have happened if you didn't go to LA? Uh, no, to 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 the oh, to the to to because yeah, because I almost moved to New York. I almost didn't even go to LA. Um, I don't know. You know, I just wouldn't have done. I wouldn't have got to be a part of of um, a little cinematic pop, history. Pop there. culture history, pop, man. Pop culture and cult culture and you know, yes. it's uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't have had that experience. So uh, it's a good, yeah, it's a good thing I went. Can you recall your first days of shooting the movie? Because I, I'm just trying to imagine and correct me if I'm wrong, but you were very young at that time. You already mentioned that you were 22 and you have all those experienced martial artists surrounding you. Then you have a uh, Corey obviously there. So many guys who were very experienced in martial right. arts and movie making. Were yeah. you intimidated at first or was it easy for you? What, what were your first days like? Um, First days, I believe, were in Sherman Oaks, the Sherman Oaks Karate School. Um, and um, no, I think probably I was uh, naive enough to uh, look if you if you if you believe enough that anything can happen, you know, to pack up your bags and move from Kentucky to L.A. and then, you know, to go in for an audition and then get it, you know, five months after you after you've uh, been there, then you pretty much believe you, you belong there. So really for me, it wasn't intimidating. I grew up uh, kind of idolizing Bill Superfoot Wallace, PKA style kickboxers. But I, in, in the last um, years before I moved to LA, I, I really wasn't following it that much. I worked out at a PKA gym, um, but I, I really, outside of one, one, paid bout that was more of an exhibition bout than anything. I, I was not pursuing a, a career as a fighter. So a lot of the guys that I, I know had, you know, maybe had, like Pete Cunningham, I didn't know who he was at the time. I, Jean Claude was unknown. He, nobody knew who he was. Um, so, um, yeah, you know, no, it was just like, uh, I, I belong here and this feels good and I'm having a good time. Nice, man. Yeah. Now, now you just mentioned John Club and them. Actually, I wanted to know, like, I heard many different stories. And I was just wondering, was he open speaking wise to the cast or was he a guy who was more to himself? Well, you know, I, I, I don't know. You know, what happens is when you're on a movie set, you end up you know, hanging out and talking to people that you're involved in. You know, I, I did, I've done soap operas over the years. Um, and you, you know, everyone and you talk to people periodically, but often you're, you're more in depth, you know, conversations, uh, come with people that you work with, that you mm. do scenes with, you're getting ready to do, do a scene together, you're getting ready to do a fight scene together. So you're talking. So, so, uh, Jean-Claude and I, you know, talked all the time. We joked all the time. Um, um, I mean, even after, even after the accident with Pete, where he, he accidentally kicked Pete, I said, I, I, I said, I got this. I said, I got it. I said, look in the scene here, give me a, a blood capsule. And so there was a scene, you know, where he jumps on me yes. when I'm down on the ground and he puts a knee into my chest like that. And I bit, bit down on a blood capsule and blood just squirted out of my mouth. This was just for fun. <laughs> and he, you know, he just about shit his pants when that happened. So it was, it was classic, but yeah, we were, I ended up helping push his Volkswagen bug. It was like, literally should have been at a junkyard that he drove every night, you know, every day to, to the set. Um, 
but um, and then we we got together for coffee and stuff a couple of times. After that, I would see him out in in L.A. from time to time. But you know, no, we were I was I was fine. We 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 got along well together. Oh, cool. Now I'm a sucker for training montages and start, starting with the first Rocky movie and No Retreat, No Surrender also has some incredible training montages. I just love them. I, I love the the progress from a fighter when he starts weak, so to speak, and, and becomes super strong at the end. Yeah. Um, but you looked pretty good in shape at the end of the movie or during the training montages. Did you prepare physically for the movie or was that the shape that or the state of shape you were in at that yeah basically at that point without preparing specifically good, good question i had um i had started um uh lifting weights i joined gold's gym as soon as i got there but i i, I actually belonged to gold's gym when i was in louisville and um i was really just kind of into lifting i got together with my buddies and we go lift so i don't think i had stretched and thrown a kick in a couple of years which now is not the case. I mean, since then, I pretty much don't let a week go by without stretching and throwing kicks. I don't do it every day, but I don't let a, a week, if I can keep from it, go by without doing that, you know, working out uh, martial arts wise. But at that point in time, I sort of just wasn't doing it. But the, the lucky part about being that age is that you really, you know, you don't lose much. You know, if you're not mm -hmm. training to be a, a fighter, if you're not training for a, a match, um, you know, you pretty, you pretty much still have all of that. So I had to, they asked me to lose some weight, quit lifting weights and just do push ups and runs. So about a week or two before the movie started, maybe two weeks, I just ran every day and did push ups. That's all I did. Um, and, and stretch and threw kicks. So I did, I, I just would do that. Um, but, um, Yeah, so I, I that's pretty much the shape that 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 I was that I was in. So if I would have known, you know, if you can plan these things and and have a, a month to let yourself, you know, bulk up a little bit or get out of shape or whatever, and then you know, for the beginning of the movie, and then and then at the end of the movie, get yourself, you know, cut up and ready to go. But the reality is, you normally don't have that luxury in 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 uh, low budget filmmaking. You know. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. But you look like you you look perfectly. Yeah, you you look pretty good in shape, and they oiled you they oiled you up pretty nice too when you were working those. I don't know what you call them. <laughs> yeah, those stretching thingies those, there. Yeah. yeah, they oiled you up pretty well. Look look good, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They did. They they had me going, and and whenever you you do a, a, a you know a workout scene like that too, you're doing it over and over, and and certainly right before it, you're, you know, you're pumping up and doing some push ups So you look yes. and the camera lighting is just yes. right. You know, <laughs> it, it's, you know, it's, it's funny. You said Rocky training scene, because that was a, that was a, a, a 45 record that I had when I was a kid, that movie was out in the seventies and I was just a kid. And that's, that's a, that's a record that I would play when I would work out in my basement, you know, <laughs> you know, and you know, what's funny. Um, When I used to work out, I used to work out to the song that was playing during your montages. Yeah. Um, vi uh, hold on to the vision. In yeah. your eyes. That was my training it, song. It's a pretty good tune. Yeah. I mean, it's, I hear it's, it's this the day. Bomb. I that's a that's a pretty, you know, yes. it's a motivating. Yes. You know. Uh, workout song you know yes. uh, and see you don't know any of that when you're making the movie because yes the, the music hasn't been made for it yet so yes um but yeah i, I was pleased with with that for sure yeah, i can imagine now another thing that i heard and you got to confirm if it's true or not the scene where you were talking to bruce lee Is it true that the guy didn't speak any English and mm -hmm. he was he was speaking Korean or something like that? And yeah, you were speaking English and bo yeah. both of you didn't understand each other? At all. Wow. So basically, they would explain, the interpreters would explain to me, you know, he's going to say blah, 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 blah. And that means this. This is what he's really saying. So you had to get the, you know, you had to just understand the scene um, and understand what he was saying to you. And I had to respond as though I, you know, he was speaking English and he would, you know, respond in Korean. And then they had to, they, he was dubbed, you know, in English. 
What an interesting decision because on the one side you would think, okay, there are so many Asians in, in the States. You would would find somebody who looks a little like uh, Bruce Lee and, and who speaks English. The guy who actually got the part in the movie, he doesn't look like Bruce Lee, but he still works so well. He has this, this, this physical presence, his face expressions. He doesn't remind me too much of Bruce Lee, but he works just perfectly for that movie. So in hindsight, uh, he was the perfect choice. Yeah. I, my understanding was that he did some of the scenes for Bruce Lee after Bruce Lee passed in Game of Death. Now, obviously not close ups and things like that, yes. but they 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 used him in some capacity to, to help, you know, finish off that movie. Um, but um, yeah, he did. He, he had a real Bruce Lee sort of presence about yes. him, but but he was. You know, he, he wasn't really particularly built like Bruce Lee. He didn't have the, the face that, you know, yes. um, like Bruce Lee. But, you know, he, he had that. Yeah, he did a good job of acting. Yes, like absolutely. Bruce Lee. Absolutely. Now, if you would have to narrow it down to one person, who but yourself was your favorite character in the movie? <laughs> well, I guess RJ. RJ was a great <laughs> character, and we had fun. We, you know, years after that, I would I would see him too. He would just like, you know, show up at my door and you know, come and stay with me for a few days. <laughs> you know, he was he was all over the place, but no, he was he was a good dude, and we uh, we we laughed a lot, man. We had some good we had some good times. It, it's funny that you say that because obviously I didn't know before before you just said it uh, said it, but. You could see that there was some real, real, um, yeah, friendship going on there because, like, we have to remember that was your first movie, right? And and if I'm not mistaken, R.J. I name him now by by his character name. Um, yeah. What also wasn't in too many movies, but you could see right away that there was some chemistry going on with the two of you. Like, you could really imagine okay those two once the scene is over those two would hang out together it just yeah. looked like it's totally yeah you could believe that they were they were actually buddies that they yes. were actually that you know they would befriend each other um and both of them being a little bit of the the underdog you know they just they came together yes. yeah it was it was a it was a great uh character development between the two that that uh, Keith Strandberg had written uh that that part of the the, the story uh, i thought it was really really cool At the end of the movie, you obviously have the final fight fighting Jean-Claude Van Damme. And that fight to me is one of the greatest, and yes, I'm saying it, one of the greatest end fights of any 80s martial arts movie ever. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I just love it. I just love it so much. First of all, uh, I think Jean-Claude is the perfect villain. I love him as a villain. He, if he got his hair combed back, a lot of hair gel, and he he, he looks so mean. He plays the perfect villain, yeah. and then and then you on the other side, you look like this nice kid, but then when you fight, and I told you that before the interview, you have a very very gracious, pretty beautiful fighting style. Like it looks so good, and I. And I'm no martial arts expert whatsoever. I just know a lot of martial arts movies and I know what I like. And the way you move was just so damn beautiful. And I wanted to ask you, wow. Wow, thank you. where where does your style come from? Because I don't know too many guys who look that clean and and, and like it, it looked partly like you were even doing some breakdance moves while you were fighting, which I've never seen before. <laughs> um You know, I, I started off uh, in martial arts when I was about 12 years old, um, local um, um, taekwondo school, flying tiger karate school, master Quang Ha So. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I started taking karate classes. And it was the one thing that I had kind of stuck with. My my uh, father, you know, uh said, you want to go give this a try? Because I, I, you know, I had tried playing football, basketball, baseball by 12, and I just didn't stick with anything. I rode motocross. I rode, you know, uh, woods bikes um, and um, and uh, played tennis and stuff like that. But I, I, a little bit of golf, um, but I just didn't really have a really good solid sport that I loved. You know, I just lost interest in every, every you know, played baseball for a couple of years, you know, that sort of thing. Hmm. Um, so that's the one thing I sort of got into and I just sort of really 
enjoy, you know, going to karate class. I think because, um, you know, I wasn't especially a big kid. So sports often, you know, the bigger you are, the, you know, easier time you have of it. But for martial, with martial arts, I was, uh, you know, I was limber. I was, I was quick. I had a lot of energy. Um, so I think it came easy to me. So that's why I liked it. You know, I didn't have to, uh, tr I mean, I had to train for like to get the varying degrees of belts and to get your black belt and second degree black belt, all that stuff. But the rest of the time I just, it was just fluid, you know, it just, I, I, it just came kind of easy to me. Now, one more question before I let you go. Um, I heard, and please correct me if I'm wrong. Did you audition for American Ninja? Yeah, they, um, I had auditioned for it. I think the first time around, even, I feel like it was maybe even before no retreat, no surrender. I, I don't remember what year the, the, the first one came out with Michael Dudikoff, but I auditioned for it. What was that? 1985. 1985. Okay. That's when it, that's so, when it came out. That's when it came out. Okay. So it must've been then, uh, obviously before no retreat, no surrender, because I, I, you know, I don't know if you know this, but I actually started filming no retreat, no surrender in 1984. Oh, I didn't know it that. Was probably October or November of of ninety. Uh, sorry, of uh, eighty four. Into after Christmas break, coming back and going to Seattle for all the Seattle stuff. In I guess it was January. Um, maybe it was February, but one, one of those months there of of nineteen eighty five. So it was finished sometime early 85, but didn't come out until, uh, 1986. And it was, um, um, April, I think, right. Uh, April or May, April, May, May, May of, of, uh, not 96, 86. Yeah. Okay. 96 was uh, sworn to justice with Cynthia Rothrock. Yes. Yeah. 10 years P later. Please tell me because, because I'm a huge Canon film fan. Yeah, like like I, I love the American Ninja movies and I love Michael Dudikoff too. But when I heard that you auditioned for American Ninja, I thought, okay, I never want to kick out Michael Dudikoff because I love him so much. Yeah. But it would have been so interesting to have seen you in the movie because Michael Dudikoff was not a martial artist. He had the yeah. looks and he was very good uh, in pretending that he could fight. Like in, in the movie, he looks like he could fight. Really believable. But it would have been a different movie if you would have been in it. Yeah. Well, they did hire me two years later um, after um, after No Retreat, No Surrender, and after I decided not to do No Retreat, No Surrender Part Two. Um, they did hire me for American Ninja 3, but they wanted me for 3, 4, 5, and 6. And it was pretty, pretty much locking me in to those, that, all those movies. And I wasn't keen on that. Um, and then, um, and then uh, they also wanted me to shoot in South Africa. At the time, you know, I was the apartheid and yes. the stuff that was going on there was not, not good stuff, you know, at all by any means. And I just didn't feel great about going um and it felt like maybe i'm am i somehow you know condoning it or being you know you're a part of it if you go there and work like like you know people aren't being treated poorly um so i i just decided it wasn't the right call and my agent i told my agent he said well you know and he agreed with me he said you know it's probably i agree with you i don't think you should go and i said okay well we're not going to go do it you know especially to be committed to all of the you know yes. to be working down there for several years so um he said uh, you know why don't you do a would you be opposed to doing a television series like a soap opera i said no i, I would love to do that and then like a few weeks later i, I got one so that lucked out but that certainly hurt me for future martial arts movies because by the time that I had finished that and was ready to do some, do it again. There really wasn't much going on. Yes. Low budget martial arts film wise. Um, I think, you know, Van Damme had made a name for himself in Seagal, yes. but there really wasn't all the rest of the stuff was super low budget. And, um, and so then I went off and did guiding light and then, 
and then from there, um, after about a year on that show, um, it, a movie did come up with Paul Maslach and, and, and Neva Friedman. And, um, and it was with uh, Cynthia Rothrock. So yes. I, I did go and do that. So. But that's super interesting. Like I never heard of that. You were basically, uh, the one who was supposed to replace Michael Dudikoff. Um, yeah. but if, if you would have taken that movie or those movies, the career of David Bradley, who played uh, the American Ninja in American Ninja 3, 4, and, and 5. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if his career would, e would have ever happened because he, American Ninja 3 was his first movie. Yeah. And he did many martial arts movies after that. So, yeah, yeah interesting how things happen and what kind of effects they have. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's you know, like you said, if I hadn't gone to that to the audition no retreat no surrender for me would have never happened um and um you know of course you always like to think that it's that it you 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 uh you were part of making it what it was you know that it wouldn't have been the same without you but um uh i certainly wouldn't have been the same without it so i you know i i uh very grateful to, to have had that experience. And, and there's been some talk about, uh, no retreat, no surrender, a series, kind of like what they've done with the karate kid. So really, if that happens, right. Oh, so, that sounds nice. Yeah. So I would, uh, I would uh, very much be, uh, be a uh, game for that, for that deal. Fingers crossed, man. Thank you. Thank you. Kurt, it was so great having you on the show. Thank you so much for taking the time. It was an honor and a pleasure.